The Bible says our God is one God. It's an interesting thing. Uh, every number in our numbering system is, is special. The number one is so unique. What comes before one? Nothing. We use the word zero in the Bible. It actually says nothing. What comes before one? Nothing. What comes after one? Everything. And the Bible says God is one. Okay. In other words, before God, nothing. With God, everything. Amen. And, and he can't be divided and he can't be multiplied by anything but himself, amen, to get that whole number. He, he's God all by himself, amen. Our God is one God. And we have 10 digits in our numbering system. And with those 10 digits, you can create any number. You can count to 100, 1,000, a million, a billion, a trillion, if you have the time, amen. But it, the, the, it's, it's limitless when you have all 10 digits you can do anything. But if you take one out, then you, then you limit yourself. See, when God says, bring the tithe, which means a tenth, when he says, bring a, the tithe into the storehouse, what he's saying is, bring a representation of all you have. Bring one tenth of your increase or one tenth of your income. The tithe is like a seed. You know, uh, if you wanted to, you could take a handful of seeds, you know, and, and put them in your pocket, and those seeds could become an orchard of trees, of fruit trees, apple trees, peach trees, whatever, which could become a, an apple company, a, you know, apple sauce and apple pies and what have you. The, the, the potential is limitless. But if you just take a part of a seed, a half a seed, a third of a seed, it won't do anything. And that's why God says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. When, when Noah was putting animals on the ark, God didn't say, look, Noah, bring a herd of elephants and bring a herd of giraffes. No, he said, just bring two, one male, one female. Because that's the seed, see? That represents everything. With one male and one female, you can have a herd of giraffes. Hello. You can have an earth filled with them. But you got to have the seed. If, if Noah would have said, well, you know, I'm just going to bring one elephant, then today we wouldn't have elephants. Amen. If he would have said, you know, I don't want to bring two giraffes, I'll just bring one, then today we wouldn't have giraffes. And sometimes people say, well, you know, I don't want to, pay my entire tithe. I just want to bring part of it. You know, the pastor might appreciate that, but, but God can't bless that. That's why God says, bring the, the whole tithe into the storehouse, because that's the seed, and, and the seed will, will multiply. Amen? If you've ever eaten an apple, you know, you can count the number of seeds in an apple, but you can't count the number of apples in a seed. And if you've ever eaten an apple and you bit into the seed, it was bitter, because God didn't intend for you to eat that seed. That seed was meant to be planted. See, one-tenth of your increase, one-tenth of your income is your tithe. It's the seed, and that's meant to be planted. So this morning, as the ushers come, and we prepare to receive this morning's tithes and offering, I want to encourage you to plant a seed. Amen? Pay your tithe. Give of your offering. The Bible says this. It says, give. Everybody say that. Say, give. Say it again. Say it loud. Say, give. That's a four-letter word that's okay to use. Amen? God, and it wasn't a suggestion, it was a commandment. God said, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over for the, with the same measure that you meet. Or in other words, how you give is how you're going to receive. And when you plant a seed, you always get back what you planted. You always get back more than you planted, and you always get back after you plant. You have to sow first. Before you can make a withdrawal from your bank, you have to make a deposit. Hello. If you, if you try to make a withdrawal without making a deposit, that's called bank robbery. <laughs> Hello. But, if you, but you can make a deposit 
and then later make a withdrawal and withdraw more than you deposited because they'll pay you interest. Amen. It's just a principle. And that's what God said. He said, bring the tithe into the storehouse and I'm going to multiply it. Amen. And I'm going to return unto you more. Amen. So let's pray this morning. Let's ask the Lord to direct us in our giving. And whatever the Lord lays on your heart to do, be faithful to do that. Pay your tithe. Give of your offering. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Lord, I pray you'll speak to every person here and those watching. And show us what you want us to do. Show us the financial gift you'd like for us to give. And Father, help us to be faithful to do that. Multiply the gift back to the giver. Answer every prayer. Heal every hurt. Supply every need. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Now prepare your offering. Now if you want to give by, by simply texting, you can text the number there. It's on your screen. 940-241-4450. You can text any amount to that number. Or of course, if you're writing a check, just write it out to CLC. You can also give with your check card, your debit card. Uh, you know, with your smartphone, you can go to our website, clc-church.com. And there's a, a menu bar. The give button is there. You can click on the give button and give through PayPal that way. You can mail your offering in. A lot of the folks that are uh, that still haven't returned to church, they're concerned about this virus, you know. And I understand. I don't want anyone to get sick. Amen. Uh, but those that are staying home, some of them are mailing their offering in. You can do that as well. Our mailing address is 806 Russell Palmer Road, Kingwood, Texas. And the zip is 77339. Ushers, if you would, you can go ahead and receive this morning's tithes and offering. I'm going to share a message with you this morning that I've entitled, God Won't Bless Your Selfie. I know it's a crazy title. I'll explain it in a few minutes. But the title of the message is, God Won't Bless Your Selfie. We're in a selfie generation. I'm going to be reading from Genesis chapter 32 and verse 21. Last week I talked to you about Esau and Jacob, and I'm going to continue to talk about them a little bit. This is Jacob coming back to meet Esau, and it says, So went the present over before him, and himself lodged that night in the company. And he rose up that night, and he took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons, and he passed over the ford Jabbok. And he took them, and he sent them over the brook, and he sent over what he had. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, I pray you'll open our spiritual eyes and ears. Let us receive uh, from heaven. Hide your word in our heart that will not sin against you, Lord. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. You can be seated. Last Sunday I shared a message with you that I entitled, What About Me? It was a message about Jacob and Esau. And, uh, you know, Esau hated his brother Jacob because Jacob had uh, stolen some things from Esau. Jacob's net name meant heel grabber or supplanter. In a practical sense, it meant somebody who uh, was a, a trickster. He'd trip you up. He would, uh, he would cheat you. And that's kind of how Jacob was. And, and he had, uh, so, uh, had Esau sell him his birthright for a bowl of wolf brand chili or something like that, some red pottage. And uh, later he, he pretended he was Esau and he fooled his blind father into blessing him as the eldest instead of the, the actual eldest, which was Esau. And Esau hated his, his brother. He said, I'm going to kill Jacob because it's his fault that I don't have the blessing. It's his fault that this was stolen from me. It's his fault that I'm not going to have the advantage. I, it's his fault and it's his fault. And the only problem with that is that it wasn't true. You know, as human beings, we like to fix the blame and not the problem. But in order to fix a problem, we have to speak the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. We often say, oh, they make me so mad. They push my buttons. They did me wrong. They, they, they. And if it's them controlling you, then there's nothing you can do about it. But if you have what you have because of your choices and your decisions, see, if it's your problem, then it can be your promise. If it's your failure, then it can be your fix. But if everybody else is pulling the strings and controlling who you are, they make me so mad, they can't make you mad. Only you can make you mad. They nailed Jesus to a cross, plucked the beard out of his face, put a crown of thorns on his head, beat him over the head with a, a rod while that crown was on his head, spit in his face, and Jesus said, Father, forgive them. Whew. If they couldn't make him mad, then they can't make you angry 
They can't make you happy. They can't make you sad. You are in control of yourself. And, and until you get that, see, Esau kept blaming everything on his brother. And, and his father gave him some advice and said, look, when you finally get the dominion, when you finally take credit for your own actions, then you'll break that yoke of your brother from off your neck. Esau had to stop blaming everyone else for his problems. After all, he sold the pottage to his brother. He sold his birthright, rather, for that bowl of pottage. Esau wanted to kill Jacob before his father Isaac died. He had made a vow. Jacob fooled his blind father and, and stole the, the blessing. And Esau said, I'm going to kill him. But he took his father's advice. And he grew up. Amen. Amen. And he did something that the Bible tells us in James 5, verse 16. Confess your faults. And we could stop right there. It has more, but that's a big statement right there. Confess your faults. Anybody know what a fault is? If you lived in California, you heard about them often. They have what they call fault lines. It's the tectonic plates beneath the surface of the earth. And when they're broken, they shift. And a fault is a broken place in the rock that's under the surface. You can't see it on the surface. But when they shift, boy, you can sure see the damage that they do. When they have an earthquake. And the Bible says, confess your faults. See, we have, all of us have faults. We all have issues. We all have broken places beneath the surface. And the other people can't see them. But we've got them. And we don't like to confess them. We like to say, well, you know, she made me so angry. That's why I did it. My wife's a great cook. That's why I'm overweight. And you know she's not stuffing that stuff down your throat. You, you have the ability to pick up the fork or put it down. Hello. At least take the racing stripe off the fork. Amen. We, we like to blame other people for our problems. You've heard me say it many times. The lady said, uh, uh, the reason I'm obese is because obesity runs in my family. And he said, no, you're obese because nobody runs in your family. Hello. You need to take credit for your own issues. You need to take credit. Confess your fault. It's my fault. You know, we, we need to be sincere with God. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. But we got to speak the truth. So often we, we speak a lie. Well, they push my buttons. You don't have any buttons. You're not a machine. They don't have control over your life. You decided to get upset. When that person cut you off, you didn't have to wave at him with one finger. <laughs> You could have just kept driving. You know, it's you were in total control. You have to be able to say it's my fault. It's, it's, it's my problem, because if it's your problem, it can be your victory. Amen. It says confess your faults. Be sincere. Somebody say sincere. We studied this word Wednesday night. It comes from two uh, Latin words, sincera, which means without wax. You say, well, what does that mean? Well, Years ago, when a potter would make a vessel, let's say he's making a, a vase, they would make them out of clay and they would heat them in, a, in an oven. And when they, the vases would heat, sometimes they would crack. And of course, the potter knew he couldn't get a lot of money for a cracked vessel. So what he'd do is he'd put wax in the cracks, make it look real smooth, make it look good. And then he'd paint over it so you couldn't see the cracks. And then he'd sell the vessels. But once in a while, when the customers would come in, they'd see all these you know, vases that looked the same, but one of them would be more expensive. And they'd say, why is that one more expensive than the other ones? And he'd say, oh, that one is sincera. In other words, that one doesn't have any wax. It, it doesn't have any hidden things. No hidden cracks. That's what it means to be sincere. Stop hiding the hidden cracks. See, see I, I don't know your life, and, and you don't know my life, but I know this. We've all sinned. We've all come short of God's glory. We've all got issues. And we need to be honest with God. Your problems aren't because... I'm a minority because I'm a male or I'm a female or because uh, my, my house was dysfunctional. Uh, one guy told me, he said, we put the funk in dysfunctional, you know, whatever. We've all got issues. We've all got problems. But God said, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The infectious and fervent prayer of a, an honest man or a righteous man will accomplish a lot. Esau finally got his breakthrough. And I want you to get your breakthrough. I want you to be able to confess your own faults. Because if they're your problems, they can be your fix. Amen. They can be your victory. And I want you to be able to fix the problem and not fix the blame like we often do. Now in the story, it's years later. 
And Jacob had reaped what he sowed. He was a trickster, a prankster. He, he lied to people, deceived people. And, and he went out and he worked for a man named Laban. And Laban treated him the same way. Laban said, if you work for me for seven years, I'll let you marry my, my daughter, the one that you want to marry. And he worked for him for seven years. And at the wedding, Laban uh, did a few things, got him to drink a little too much and, and do the things. And when the wedding was over, he realized he married the wrong girl. Laban said, well, you got to marry the oldest one first. You know, if you want my other daughter, you got to work another seven years. And he kept cheating him all the time. And Jacob finally had enough and he left Jacob. He left with his, with his family. And Laban came after him. And he was heading home and he was in a situation because he's heading home where his brother Esau said, I'm going to kill you the next time I see you. I'm going to kill you. So he's got Laban behind him and Esau in front of him and he's on the run and he doesn't know what to do. And fortunately, before Laban caught him, God talked to Laban and said, don't hurt him. And so he made peace with Laban. Laban went back. But now he's facing Esau and he, he, he doesn't know what Esau is going to do. And he, he tells one of his men or a couple of his men, go, go ahead and, and, and let my brother know that I'm coming and bring me word again because I, I want to know what he's going to say. When, when y'all tell him that your, your twin brother Jacob's coming, is he going to say, kill the fatted calf? Let's make ready for a celebration. Or is he going to say, hey guys, whoever sees him first, take the shot. You know, Jacob didn't know what was going to happen. So he sent these guys ahead. And uh, they come back. And they tell Esau, well, we told your brother that you're coming. What did he say? He got 400 men. He's on his way to meet you. Holy cow. Jacob's like, oh, no, this isn't good. He's coming to kill me. And so he, he starts saying, look, let, let's send some presents ahead. That was our opening text. He sent the present ahead. He said, send some cattle, send some sheep, you know, and, and, and let, put the women and children first. What a guy. Jacob hadn't changed much. In fact, he even told him, divide them into two different uh, areas. Send some this way and some this way. That way, if he, if he starts killing those, will you, you all run for it, you know. If he starts killing you, will you all run for it? He, he just, he was nervous. And he, it said that he sent him a, a cross and he stayed by himself. And the Bible says he wrestled with a man. Or, and it also says he wrestled with God. There's only one person that would fit that description, being God and man. And that's the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ. He stayed by himself and he... He wrestled. I was thinking about that. If I tell somebody, well, the Lord called me to be a, a minister, but, but I wrestled with God about that. If, if I said that, it means I was having a conflict and, and I was struggling with myself and, and communicating with God. It wouldn't be a physical fight, but in, in Jacob's instance, it was a physical battle. But I believe it was also a struggle. He had to, to deal with himself and the decisions he's made in his lifetime. He just, he had deceived us elderly father because he was blind and made him think he was the eldest son and now he's worried about the eldest son killing him and he sends everybody ahead and he stays back on this side of the river and he wrestled with God let me read it to you Genesis thirty-two twenty-five. 25 and when he saw that he prevailed not against him he touched the hollow of his thigh this is the Lord it says he he puts Jacob's hip out of joint because Jacob had been wrestling with him all night it says, and Jacob's thigh was out of joint and he, as he wrestled with him. And I don't know if you realize it or not, but if you, your hip gets out of joint in a wrestling match, it, the match is over. You're not going to win. You, you can hardly walk. You can hardly stand up. And so Jacob grabs hold of the Lord. It's all he can do now. He can't fight anymore. And he holds on and the Lord says, let, let me go. He says, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I'm not going to let you go except you bless me. And the Lord said, what's your name? He said, Jacob, he said, from now on, your name's not going to be Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have power with God and with men, and you have prevailed. The name Israel means to wrestle with God or to have power with God. Jacob was wrestling with the Lord that day, but he had been wrestling all of his life, in all honesty. See, in Genesis 25, verse 21, it says, Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. When Jacob was in the womb, he was wrestling. <laughs> this guy had been struggling and fighting all his life. Some of you feel like you've been battling all your life. Man, when am I going to get a break? And she said, if it be so, 
Why am I thus? And, and she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. Let me read that again. Two nations are in thy womb. I want you to repeat that with me. Say this. Say, two nations are in your womb. He said, two nations are in your womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. God knew what was going to happen before they were born. I had you repeat that two nations in the womb because I had somebody call me this morning. Actually, they text me. And they said, I want to ask you a question. They said, how come so many people in Texas think Donald Trump's a godly person? Do they think when Jesus returns, he's going to be a Republican? <laughs> and I responded, I said, well, I said, I believe that when Jesus returns, he's not going to return to take sides. He's going to return to take over. And I said, I think the reason maybe some Christians like the one candidate over the other, I said, has to do with the uh, issue of abortion. I said, see, the Bible says God hates the shedding of innocent blood. And there's no one more innocent than the unborn child. I said there's other issues, I'm sure, but that's one of the big ones. He didn't respond to that part. And I was thinking about this. Those unborn children, God said there's two nations in your womb. Not just two people, two nations, two people, two cultures, two... Sometimes we're, as people on the earth, we say, well, God, why do you let these diseases happen? And why do you let this, these horrible things take place? And, you know, the thing is, the cure to this disease might have been here a long time ago, but maybe we aborted the child that was going to come up with it. I mean, if one child can represent an entire nation, don't you think there can be doctors and scientists and lawyers and teachers? And what are we losing when we abort one child? It's a big deal. I just want to throw that in there. It's not part of the message, but. But before this child was born, he was wrestling with God. He wrestled with a man physically. And I think he was wrestling with himself as well. Wrestling with being obedient to God, with his direction. And I thought about this wrestling match that Jacob had. I wondered what brought it on. He just ran from Laban, narrowly escaped. Now he's headed home where he believes his brother's going to kill him. And I believe he said, you know, I need to pray. And there was a lifetime of issues that he had to deal with. He wasn't happy with who he was. He wanted what others had. He pretended he was somebody else to get what he had. A lot of people do that today. They wrestle with who they are, with their identity. Sometimes they're trying to be someone that they're not. It's so funny. That's why I call this message, God won't bless your selfie, because... We're in a generation where people like to take pictures of themselves and put it online. And uh, a while back, I was in my living room and family was there. And I took a picture of one of my daughters. And, and, and right away, as soon as I took the picture, they said, Dad, don't post that picture. I said, too late, I'm going to post it. They're like, no, no, let me look at it first. And they looked at that. They said, Dad, that's horrible. That doesn't even look like me. I said, how can it not look like you? It's you, you know. She, she said, give me, that, give me that phone. She got it. She said, I need to. She said, look, Dad, when you take a picture, you got to take it from the right side. And you got to take it from up high. Don't, don't. I've, I've learned that. I've seen, I noticed people do that on Facebook. They, they take pictures from up high. I mean, some of them look like they had a drone take the picture. They're smiling. <laughs> look at it. It looked like somebody from an airplane shot the photo. <laughs> they said, it makes them look like they're in better shape. Well, yeah, from up there, you look like an ant, you know. You don't post that picture. Let me get that picture. I need to put a few highlights here. And I, I want to add this effect to it, you know. Effect, yeah, there's effects on the phone. You can change it. And, you know, if I stretch it out a little bit, I look a little bit thinner. And, uh, you know, I think I'll change my eye colors. And, now, that looks like me. I'm like, that does not look like you. <laughs> that looks like one of the Kardashians. They, they, they don't look like my kids. I said, the one I took, that looked like you, you know. See, people want to be someone that they're not. And see, God can't bless your selfie. God says you'll know the truth. The truth will make you free. God wants to bless who you are, who he created you to be, not who you pretend to be. 
You see people at these riots breaking into these high ticket stores, Gucci, Versace, you know. Why? I mean, what are you going to do? You steal a $3,000 dress, wear it while you're driving your car with a window down because your air conditioner's not working? <laughs> people are going to think, I'm rich. Yeah, you're going to fool everybody. Whew, man. You got a $900 Versace belt on and shoes from Walmart. Ooh, I'm, I'm looking good. Come on. Just be who you are. You know, why try to be somebody you're not? You are the best you you can be, so why don't you just be you and quit trying to be like everybody else? Amen. God can't bless you, selfie. People add filters and all kinds of things, trying to look like somebody they're not. But God wants to bless who you are, who you were created to be, not who you pretend to be. See, Jacob had been wrestling with identity since before he was born. Esau was the firstborn. Esau was the one that's supposed to get the, the double portion, which goes to the firstborn. But, but Jacob fooled his blind dad. He, he dressed like Esau. He, he talked like Esau. He smelled like Esau. Put his clothes on. And he was able to fool his blind dad and steal the, the blessing. So many people deal with conflict between who they are and who they pretend to be. You know, when you take that picture in front of that Maserati, we know it's not your car, you know. You, you know, you see everybody there, they're, they're there in front of that Bentley like this, you know. Take a picture, take a picture. It's like, hey, look, we know what a Bentley costs. And, and we know what kind of money you make because, you know, McDonald's doesn't pay that much. Hello. <laughs> I mean, really, who are we kidding, you know. But, but Jacob tried to pretend he was somebody else and he, he, he fooled his blind dad. But I want you to know something. God's not blind. Hello. God's not blind. He knows who you are. And he created you for a purpose. And I want you to fulfill that purpose. See, James 5, 16 says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. See, God says, I can heal you, but you got to be honest with yourself because it's the truth that makes you free. We have to be real with God because God knows who we are. Unlike Isaac, God's not blind. Hello? It was... Jacob's mother, Rebecca, that came up with the idea for Jacob to deceive his dad. But one thing a lot of people don't realize is that uh, Jacob and Esau at this time were in their 70s. See, after a while, you got to take credit for your own actions. Hello. My mom told me, hey, buddy, you're 75. <laughs> the other day, I, you know, I'm going to tell on her because she's not here today. I know she might watch this online, but too late. <laughs> The other day we were at home and Lisa said, honey, you need to call Ashton. You need to call our daughter. I said, why? She wants to go to the other side of town and do this and that. And, you know, we've got those hurricanes coming in the Gulf and, and, and you know, it's dangerous. And what if she gets a flat? I said, Lisa. I said, Ashton is a grown young lady. I said, we, we don't need to be telling her what to do. She goes, yeah, but it's dangerous. I said, look, Lisa, I know you want to be able to, you know, protect the kids and tell them what to do. But our kids are 40 now. Hello. <laughs> I said, leave him alone. <laughs> I said, you, know, you and I were married and on our own, we're 20. You know, the, all of our kids are older than 20 now, you know. They don't need mom calling them, telling them what to do. I said, don't you? I said, you don't want them calling us saying, hey, look, you know, you guys are, you know, getting old. You can hardly get around. Y'all better stop shopping because, you know, you get a flat tire, you, you know. I said, you wouldn't want them calling us saying that, would you? She just turned the TV a little louder, didn't answer, hey, you know. And, these boys were in their 70s. And sure, you know, his mother told him what, what she wanted him to do, but he could have made a choice on his own. Hello. See, after a while, we got to take credit for our own actions. God's not going to bless your selfie. <laughs> He's not going to bless who you pretend to be, but he'll bless who you are if you'll be truthful with God. You know, I, I wondered why God asked him this question. See, because God knows who he is. Genesis 32, 26. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let you go except you bless me. And the Lord said, what's your name? Why did he ask that question? What's your name? See, the last time you got a blessing, you pretended to be your brother Esau. You dressed like Esau. You smelled like Esau. You put fur on so you'd feel like Esau. And you fooled your blind dad. But I'm not blind. I'm God. So you're saying, bless me. Well, who are you? Are you going to be honest with me? 
Are you going to be truthful with God? See, don't lie to God. There's no point in that. God knows who you are. He knows everything about you. So you might as well be sincere with him. Amen? He said, Jacob, what's your name? Because he wanted, he, I mean, he knew who Jacob was. He prophesied him before he was born, <laughs> prophesied about him. But he wanted Jacob to come clean and be honest. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Really? Who am I blessing? What's your name? And I think it took Jacob by surprise a little bit. I think he finally let go of God and said, uh, I'm Jacob. I'm the one that lies to people. I'm the one that tricks people and, and uh, tries to steal their blessing and tries to get stuff that doesn't belong to me. I think he was finally honest with God. And God said, well, now that I know who you are, I can show you who you were created to be. Amen. See, when we're honest with God, when we realize the truth, the truth will set us free. And I believe that day J Jacob was free. God knew who he was. He just wanted Jacob to be honest with him and confess who he was. Amen. And when he did, when Jacob told him who he was, then God told Jacob who he could be. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince that has power with God and with men and has prevailed. Man, we just need to be real with God, friends. That's what the message is about. It's really not about selfies. I don't care if you take pictures of yourself. That's not important. You can post whatever pictures you want. But if you want God to bless you, you got to be real with God because he's not blind. Don't try to be someone you're not. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual and fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Throughout Jacob's life, he took his brother's birthright. He stole his brother's blessing. He likely gained many things through deceit. But Mark 8, 36 says this, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? When Jacob was finally willing to confess who he was, then God was able to bless him and promote him and make him who he wanted him to be. Because God will bless you, but, but not your avatar, you know, not, not your selfie, not who you pretend to be. When Jacob finally confessed who he really was, God told him who he could really be in Christ. It's okay if you're not happy with the way things are. It's okay if you're not satisfied with what you have. But don't try to be someone you're not. Surrender to God and let him tell you who you were created to be. Amen? Let him tell you your destiny. Jacob was a deceiver, a prankster, a supplanter. But Israel is Jacob after meeting God. Amen? Israel is Jacob being honest with God. And I believe that today there might be some... Jacob's here that need to become Israel. Amen. I believe there might be some Jacob's here today that need to be honest with God. Quit trying to blame all of our problems on other people and other things. Well, you know, uh, I was never treated right. And I was never. I, I had a gentleman tell me uh, I had made a comment in one of my messages. I said, uh, I don't believe racism exists because there's only one race on the planet. I said, the truth is there's only one race. It's a human race. I said, if you don't like somebody because of the color of the skin or the color of their eyes or the color of their hair, it's not racism. It's just stupidity. I said, we ought to just call it what it is. It's not racism. I said, if God's your father, I'm your brother. It doesn't matter what color you are. Besides, none of us chose the color of our skin. We were born with that. I said, and Jesus didn't shed his skin for us. He shed his blood for us. The snake sheds his skin. Think about that. Well, this man was offended by that. And he said, well, you don't know what it's like being black. I said, you're right. I said, you don't know what it's like being a Mexican. I said, at the time I grew up, you know, you don't know what it's like being a little kid in school and people calling you spick, beaner, wetback, meskin. And taking out your lunch and everybody else has got sandwiches and what you got is in a tortilla. So you try to hide it in the bag while you're eating it. Of course, today, tortillas are popular. I could have sold them, you know, but, you know, not back then, you know. I said, I remember what it was like. It was tough. But the truth is, we all go through problems. We've probably all been bullied at one time or another in our life. Everybody, I don't care what color you are. But get over it. I mean, how old are you now? You know, we can keep blaming all the problems in our life on somebody else, on something else. But the truth is, 
There's been people of all color skin become very successful, especially in America. And it's not because of the color of the skin that they were successful. It's because of the decisions that they made and the content of their character. Amen. And so we need to be honest, not just with God, but with ourselves. Sure, we, we, we may have had disadvantages. I understand that. Maybe you come from a home where, you know, dad wasn't there or, or mom beat you or whatever. And, and I get it. And, and none of us maybe had the perfect life. But one thing we all have in common is we got 24 hours in a day, every one of us. The only difference is what you do with the time you have. Amen. And that's for me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Dad, don't post that picture. That doesn't even look like me. Honey, it's you, baby. Now, it may not be what you want to look like, but trust me, that's what the picture was. It was just an image of what it saw. The camera doesn't lie. Amen. Now, we do. But the camera doesn't. You know, the guys go on these dating sites where they, they meet the girl at, at lunch, you know. And he, he walks up to the table and says, hi, I'm John. And she goes, oh, my gosh. You know, she looks at the picture and goes, that's you? You know. I didn't know you were only four foot tall. And here you look a lot taller, you know. Well, that was a toy truck I was standing next to, you know, whatever. <laughs> Man, you might as well just be yourself. Hello. Because God can bless who you really are. You shall know the truth. And the truth will make you free. Let's stand together. The broadcast today. I hope the message ministered to you. Listen, I want to encourage you to invite Jesus to be Lord of your life. If you haven't done that already, do that now. All you got to do is say, Jesus, come into my life. Be Lord of my life. Forgive me of all my sins. Wash them away with your blood. I accept you as my Savior and Lord. And I make a vow to serve you, Jesus, as Lord of my life for the rest of my life. If you prayed that prayer with me, if you believe it in your heart, you confess with your mouth, you're saved. Amen. And I want to ask you if you would consider sowing a financial seed into the ministry. That it's simple to do. All you got to do is text any amount to the number on your screen, 940-241-4450. That number again is 940-241-4450. You can text any amount to that number. Or if you'd like, you can go on our website, uh, clc-church.com. That's clc-church.com. And on the menu bar, the word, you'll see the word give. Click on the button that says give. A menu will drop down, and you can give through PayPal that way. Or if you'd like to mail an offering in, you can do that. Our mailing address is 806 Russell Palmer Road, Kingwood, Texas. And the zip is 77339. That's 806 Russell Palmer Road, Kingwood, Texas. Zip is 77339. Of course, my favorite way for you to give is to come into the church and fellowship with us. We just want to get to meet you and love you and uh, pray with you. And we hope to see you here soon. Come out and visit us, Christian Life Center here in Kingwood, Texas. Once again, thanks for watching. God bless you.